I got these comments a couple weeks ago on one of my videos about Studio One. It looks like these people are having issues with noise, crackling, and just overall CPU overload on their computers while they're using Studio One. <laughs> So today I want to show you the best settings to use in Studio One so that way Studio One and your computer work seamlessly together. And make sure you stick around till the end because I'm going to show you one setting that you just click on and it can drop your CPU usage in half. So I have free vocal presets for Studio One. Just click the top link in the description and download those for free. You just drag and drop them onto your track and your vocals will sound great. So now let's jump on into the DAW and I will show you the best settings for Studio One. So I have this track here that sounds like this. And as I'm sure you heard, there was a little bit of crackling and popping and noise in there. And I did this intentionally so I could show you how to fix it. So here are the three things you need to pay attention to. You're gonna to go to Studio One, click on Options, and then Audio Setup. We need to pay attention to block size, sample rate, and process precision, which is just your bit rate. So let's go with block size first. This is how far your computer is able to look into the future to give it enough time to process the audio. This is a great thing, except when you are recording, this can cause latency. This is because your computer cannot look literally into the future before you even start singing. It has no idea what you're going to do. Once things are recorded, it's able to look into the future, but not until then. So if you were just mixing, you can just put this at 2048, samples and you are good to go. And this will drastically decrease the CPU usage because you are stretching out the time allotment that you are giving your computer to process the audio. Sample rate is essentially like frames per second on a camera, 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. This is how many samples of audio it is taking and snipping. And it's a lot harder to trick your ears into hearing things. So we have to take 44,100 or 48,000 snippets per second in order to recreate sound. If you have this set any higher than 48,000, and if your interface can handle it, you are going to be taxing your CPU a lot harder because it has to process a lot more data before it's able to put it into the computer. By the time you bounce songs out, they are going to go down to 44.1. So if you have it at 44.1 or 48, you are good to go. Now there is your process precision, and honestly, you can just leave it at 32. It works just fine, and 32 bits completely fine. So now, once you have those settings worked out, we have this really cool handy feature down here called the Performance tab, and this is where we are going to be spending most of our time for these settings. If you just click on this, a little pop-up window will show up and it'll show you exactly how much CPU you are using. I have a six core, 12 thread, four gigahertz CPU, and I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I do have a somewhat decent computer to be processing all of this stuff, but everything that I do just helps me be able to build out sessions and not have to worry about things. So right here, I'm using actually half of my CPU power just running this. So here are a couple settings that we have to mess with. Right here is called your dropout protection. This you're going to be using all the time. If you are getting crackles and pops and noise and stuff like that, you can just bring your dropout protection up. So for example, you can set it to medium. Now there is a problem with going any higher than medium. With medium, there is a slight delay in my voice, but it's so minuscule. Now if I switch to high, now there is a bigger and longer delay. And if I set it to maximum, there is a huge amount of latency and it's almost impossible to record and sing with this. So we're just gonna bring this back to low here. And if your computer can handle it, that's fine. But once you're done recording, you can just switch back to maximum and it'll bring your CPU usage down. Now there is another great feature down here called show devices. And this is literally telling you what is the exact culprit for your CPU overload. So all I have to do here is I have to play the track. <laughs> So I can see that my augmented strings from Achira is the biggest culprit. And I can literally right click and disable it right from this menu. So if it's something that's really not that important, I can just eliminate it. Now there is one more feature inside of Studio One that is probably going to be the most important feature that you're gonna use. And it is called the Enable Plugin Nap button. And it's right here in your performance monitor. If you click this button, what it will do is it will disable any plugins that are not being used currently. So for example, I have this vocal chop up here and it is using a lot of plugins. 
But if I am playing this section here, it will disable those plugins and then it'll re-enable those plugins right before this part of the song comes on and vice versa. I have a bass part here that's using some plugins and it'll disable those plugins on the bass channel while I'm playing a section over here because it is not using it. So let's come back down here to the performance monitor and take a look. I am at 46, 45% CPU. When I enable plugin map, watch this thing drop. And boom, there it is. 27%. It was cut literally almost in half. So now let's take a listen again and see if I get some more crackling issues. So there are a lot of great features inside of Studio One, but there are a few that don't make any sense. If you wanna know what I'm talking about, click this video right here. In that video, I show you what I think the worst feature inside of Studio One is and how you can fix it using key commands and macros. So click here to watch that video. And now as always, go create.